It's no secret that I love Synology Drive, but I think one of the reasons that I love it so much is because I use it in a different way than most people. Synology Drive is how I access 99% of the data that I'm regularly using on my Synology NAS, which means that I access files through SMB very rarely. Either I access the file on a device directly using on-demand sync, or I pull up the Synology Drive web application or mobile application and access it that way. The point that I wanna make upfront is that not all of my data is accessible in Synology Drive, but the data that I am regularly accessing, meaning my documents and any real working data that I have is accessible. This protects me because anytime I save, a new version of the file is created. So in an event where potential data loss inside of the document itself occurs, all I have to do is roll back one version. None of this functionality would exist without Synology Drive. And in my opinion, it's the best application that Synology offers when configured properly. Now there's a lot to this, as I've done Synology Drive setup videos, but never a comprehensive overview on trying to get the most out of the application. So in this video, I wanna show you exactly how to set up the Synology Drive server, but not only set it up. I wanna configure an optimized version of Synology Drive with client syncing and on-demand sync, a Synology Drive web portal, versioning so that you never lose data, backups so that the data is protected, advanced features, and after we have an optimized version of Synology Drive, show you how to access that data locally and remotely so that you have a complete private cloud for all of your data. So before we get started, there's one quick thing we have to go over, especially if you're used to editing data through SMB or a network drive. When you pull up the NAS through its IP address, you're editing the data directly on the NAS through your network. Rather than storing a copy locally, you're physically editing that file on the NAS through your network, which can potentially be a bottleneck and cause performance issues. For something small like a Word document, you're not going to notice it, but with a larger file using something like video editing as an example, your network can potentially be a bottleneck. You're also not storing versions of those files as the file itself is getting edited, but there's no application that's tied to the actual file to provide something like versions. For this reason, upfront, you have to decide if you actually want to edit the file directly off the NAS or if you want to edit it locally. The downside of editing it locally is you're physically storing the file on your device, so you need to have the available storage space. But with how on-demand sync works, you only need the storage space for the file as you're actively working on it, and then can remove it from your device and keep it on the NAS. So there are definitely positives and negatives, but you have to determine what makes the most sense for you. To highlight how all of this works, we're going to go over everything but we'll start with the actual Synology Drive admin console. Now, in order to get to this point, you have to install the Synology Drive application in Synology's package center. As soon as you do, you can access the Synology Drive admin console, and this is where you'll administer your Synology Drive instance. This is where you'll see all of the Synology Drive clients, as well as your shared folders, which are listed under the team folder section. This is where you'll determine the exact shared folders that will be accessible inside of Synology Drive, and they will all function the same outside of the My Drive folder, so we'll go over that first. The My Drive folder is a folder that's private to the user when they log into Synology Drive. Anything stored in this folder will be accessible to them only, so this is where private documents for that specific user should be stored. This My Drive section is linked to a user's home directory, which means that administrators in DSM have access to this data, and it's technically accessible inside of the Homes folder in File Station. Now the homes folder in DSM consists of an individual folder for every user on your NAS and the data that a user stores in their drive will be stored in that folder. This is only necessary to understand for two main points. First, administrators have access to this data. And second, you must back up the homes folder if you want backups of this data, but we'll get to that point later. When you enable this folder, you have to determine how many versions you'd like to keep which I always set to the highest limit. When this is enabled, every single time you save, a new version of that file will be stored. This allows you to browse previous versions of files and restore that previous version if you ever need to. You might not think this is helpful, but it is, and I've used it countless times to restore files that corrupt or have some sort of data loss that wouldn't normally be easy to recover from. Now this process is how you enable team folders as well, but the team folders are slightly different. Team folders are designed for collaboration so that multiple users can collaborate on files in a shared folder at the same time. However, 
Team folders respect permissions of the shared folder. So if you have one user on your NAS that you don't want to have access to that folder, enabling a team folder doesn't automatically give that user permission to it. This allows you to separate your data, configure different sync tasks, different version settings, and overall manage permissions the same way you always have. Separating them out can be extremely helpful when it comes to backups and snapshots, as you can have different frequencies based on the importance. So I'll explain exactly how I have mine configured later Later so that you can see an example set up with multiple team folders. Once your folders are configured in the admin console, you have to determine which way makes the most sense to access your data. There are three main ways that I think most users will access Synology Drive, using the web application, mobile application, or client application. The web application can be configured fairly easily inside of Synology DSM. In the control panel, open login portal, then select applications. Edit the Synology Drive application, then give it a unique port. From there, open a new web browser and type in the IP address of your Synology NAS, plus the port you configured. You should be brought to a login portal for Synology Drive. Sign in with your user account, and as soon as you do, you'll get brought to the Synology Drive web application. If you've ever used something like Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox, this will function extremely similarly and will allow you to download, add, or remove documents directly from here. You can also share, view versions, and more. Plus, if you have Synology Office installed, you can actually edit certain files directly in your web browser. So not only can you navigate through your My Drive folder or team folders, but you can potentially manage everything you need from this web interface. Just keep in mind that if you're using Synology Office, you're technically editing the file directly off the NAS through a web browser. Now the web application works extremely similarly to the mobile application, where you'll download the Synology Drive mobile application, sign into your NAS, and be able to access your documents from just about anywhere, assuming remote access is configured, which we'll get to in a little bit. The web application and mobile application are fairly easy to understand, but things get a little more complicated when it comes to the desktop application. But this is where the true value of Synology Drive comes into play. The Synology Drive application on Windows or Mac OS is designed to be a sync tool. You'll take a local folder on your device and sync it to a shared folder on your NAS. The idea is that they'll both be a clone of one another where adding a file on your PC will automatically upload it to your NAS, but if a file is added to your NAS, it'll automatically download to your PC or Mac as well. There are two main ways to configure the Synology Drive client, and it generally comes down to exactly how you want it to work. The biggest thing you need to decide on is if you'll use on-demand sync or if you won't. If you don't use on-demand sync, every single file that exists in that shared folder will be downloaded and stored locally on your device. So it'll be a clone of that shared folder, and if there's 10 gigabytes of data on that shared folder, your device will store that 10 gigabytes of data as well. With on-demand sync, you're basically storing a link to that file. Rather than downloading everything in the shared folder, you actually don't download anything other than a reference to exactly where the file exists on your NAS. The same exact folder structure exists, and when you double click that file, it references where it exists on the NAS and the file will be downloaded in real time. This ensures that you're not actually storing the file on your device until you actually want to use it, which is space efficient, but remember, no authentication occurs outside of the drive client. So preferably, this will be done with a device that has some sort of user authentication to actually log into the device, assuming permissions are a concern. Now that folder will function the same way as it does without on-demand sync. So if you add a file to it, it'll sync that data directly to the NAS. And if a file is added to the NAS, a reference to that file will exist that you can double click to download. The main benefit is that you don't have to sync everything both ways, but this is why this tool is so powerful. While you don't have to sync everything, there might be specific folders or files that you do want to sync all the time, and with on-demand sync, you can. If you right-click a folder or file, you can pin a local copy, which will basically download any changes that occur on the NAS and store that file or folder in real time on your PC as a clone of what's on the NAS. The icon changes as well to highlight that a local copy is pinned. You can also free up space. So if you worked on a file and no longer have to work on it, you can right click it to free up space, which will remove the local file from your device, but keep the file on your NAS and the icon will revert back to a cloud to indicate it exists on the NAS. 
The reason this is so powerful is because with this type of syncing, the data is moving to the NAS, which means that the NAS itself is where the data is stored and your client applications are simply referencing the data on the NAS. This not only helps with actually accessing the data, but with performance because the file is being edited off the local hard drive or SSD. It also helps with data integrity as you can easily configure snapshots and backups on the NAS and the entire process will be automated. So since the data lives on the NAS, the first thing to configure is snapshots, but the beauty in how Synology Drive works with team folders is that different snapshot frequencies can be configured based on the data being stored. So if you're a video editor and all of your video edits are in a team folder, configure snapshots every 15 minutes because you'll most likely be going through versions very, very quickly and the snapshot can potentially save you in the event of corruption or data loss. Alternatively, if you're editing Word files or saving every now and then, you don't need snapshots every 15 minutes. Hourly or even daily might be fine. The main point is that you already configured versions and now you're adding snapshots on top of it. So from an actual usage perspective, there should be practically no scenario where you lose any work if Synology Drive is configured and syncing properly. Once the snapshots are configured properly, move on to backups and configure a hyper backup task with all the data that you're normally editing preferably off-site. The same with snapshots is true of backups. If you want more frequent backups, you can configure different backup tasks tied to different shared folders that will all back up at different frequencies. Now, as mentioned before, the team folders are easy to configure for snapshots and backups because they're linked to a shared folder, but the My Drive section is linked to the Homes folder. So in that snapshot or backup task, make sure you configure the Homes shared folder and every user will have their My Drive configured with snapshots and backups. As soon as you sync data back and forth with Synology Drive, backing it up offsite preferably, you'll have a 3-2-1 backup that's fully automated and any data you're working on right now will have the highest overall data security because it technically lives on the NAS as opposed to on your device. So you'll have versions, snapshots, and backups, even though you're technically editing it locally on your device. The only other thing that I wanna mention about the Synology Drive client is that it has a backup feature. To me, it's a poor word to use as it's still a sync and not a backup. And in my opinion, if you want to backup your PC, use Active Backup for Business. It's just gonna be a better fit and you'll have a true backup functionality rather than sync functionality. But if you insist on using it, you can select specific folders on your PC that will automatically sync to the NAS and the data will exist in your homes folder. Unlike the main direction of a client sync task, which is NAS to PC, this will be the opposite, so PC to NAS. If you have one device and wanna ensure that one device syncs specific folders to the NAS, this could be a good option. But for the majority of people, I'd recommend using a regular sync task as I think it's a better fit for most. Now Synology Drive has a bunch of advanced features that make it easier to manage your data and is all configured in the Synology Drive admin console. There are three main things you can do wipe the data of a device remotely, restrict downloads of data, and watermark data. The remote wipe feature is the easiest, but it is only supported on the Synology Drive client and mobile application. When you unlink a device, which will stop it from syncing, an option to remotely wipe the device will appear. This allows you to not only stop the data from being accessible, but the data will also be removed from the device as well, assuming there's a connection from the device to the NAS, which we'll discuss in a minute. This means that if a device is lost or stolen, you can wipe the data without having to access the device. The next feature only applies to the Synology Drive mobile application and team folders, but you can actually restrict downloads as well. If you want a device to be able to read the data inside of a team folder, but not actually download it, you can restrict downloads. This does exactly what it says. You can access the data, but can't download it. Finally, you can watermark files. I think this is more of a niche use case, especially for home users, but you can configure a watermark for file types like PDFs and images. And the watermark will automatically display on that type of data when it's configured for a team folder. In very niche cases, this can be very helpful. This all leads us to the main issue. This all works great locally, but how can we access it remotely? This is where it always gets tough, and I've done a bunch of videos on remote access, so I'm going to keep it brief here. The absolute easiest way to access Synology Drive remotely is with Quick Connect. It will work with the Synology mobile application as well as the Synology Drive client, 
but will only work with the web application if you first sign into DSM. You won't connect to the port that we configured earlier. There are downsides to Quick Connect, which I go over in this video, but from an ease of use perspective, you basically enable Quick Connect, set up a Quick Connect ID, ensure that Synology Drive is enabled or DSM is enabled for the web application, and you'll be able to sign in. If you're looking for the easiest option, this is it. If you're looking for the best overall option, it's going to be a VPN. Whether you host it on your NAS using something like OpenVPN or Tailscale or run it on a different device locally, a VPN will allow you to access everything on your local network remotely, meaning that the mobile application, client, and web application will all work, but so will everything else on your local network. It's also generally the most secure option as you're managing everything yourself and don't have to rely on third parties outside of Tailscale if you decide to go down that path. The downside of using a VPN is that it's the most restrictive as you need to connect in an application before being able to access anything. If you'll be using Synology Drive to share files with external users, a VPN isn't going to be your best option. But if it's a select few users, it's probably the best path to take. Both options as well as others are fine, but the goal should be remote access so you have a complete private cloud. Now I'll quickly go over how I use Synology Drive, which will hopefully help explain a potential setup you can use. I have three main sync tasks, one for my personal documents, one for WonderTech documents, and one for YouTube videos. I'm the only one who uses all three of them, but the WonderTech documents rarely change, so I configured a daily snapshot of that folder. For the YouTube videos I create, I never wanna be in a position where I lose more than 15 minutes of work. So with versions plus 15 minute snapshots, in a worst case scenario, I should only be about 15 minutes behind if I have to restore that snapshot which is a true worst case scenario for me. The My Drive section is where I store all of my personal documents. So when I sign into Windows or Mac OS and select my documents folder, I have the same documents on every single device I own, and they're tied to my user account on my Synology NAS. This folder gets daily snapshots as well, but all three folders get backed up offsite nightly with hyper backup. This can be configured various different ways, but this is what works for me and makes the most sense. If you're starting fresh, the best place to start is with the actual data. If you have a ton of data that's frequently changing, you might wanna split that out to a separate shared folder so that you can take snapshots and backups more frequently. However, you might look at versions as enough of a protection for you and all the data can live in one shared folder. There isn't a right or wrong answer, but as soon as you structure your data, you can look at how you're going to manage it with Synology Drive, which will give you all of the benefits we discussed in this video. Assuming that you have it all configured properly, you'll use your network drive or SMB very, very rarely and possibly never again. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.